Nike and Adidas dominate the football boot market. And that's fair enough because they have some really great products on offer. But the competition is heating up and arguably no brand is growing faster than New Balance. And over the last few years, they've developed a core lineup of three really solid boots. So in this video, we're gonna go over each of those models, cover their features, and see where they stand amongst the competition. And by the end of the video, you should have a better idea whether or not one of these boots might be right for you. And of course, after watching, if you're interested in picking up a pair of any of the boots we discuss, you can find links to them in the description below with discount codes. And to kick things off, let's talk about the first boot in our list, the 442 V2 Pro. So I've got a pretty special connection to the 442 because this is the boot that I was wearing almost all of last year. And for that reason, they got at least six months of really heavy use, which you can definitely see along the sides of the boot here. But despite all of that use, they're still actually intact and really reliable. Now to give you some background, the 442 V2 Pro is going to be the only leather football boot that New Balance currently has in their lineup. And in addition to that, it's also the only boot they have that hasn't been refreshed this year. And honestly, I don't have a huge problem with that because this is such a solid boot, I think a lot of people aren't really looking for any sudden changes. Now the toe box of the 442s is where you're going to find all of that really soft premium kangaroo leather. And that's pretty impressive to find on a boot at this price point because the 442 retails for around $130, but that being said, you can so often find them discounted below that. The leather is going to be just as soft and as plush as you would expect from a more traditional leather football boot, and it's going to give you such a comfortable and close touch on the ball. But while the leather is pretty good on the 442s, for me, it's not the most impressive thing about this boot. Because the real reason that I picked up this model, and I think the reason why it's going to appeal to most people, is going to be the fit. And you can tell just by looking at the silhouette of this boot, the toe box is so much wider compared to the majority of other options on the market. And that's a pain point for a lot of people. There's so many people that ask me, you know, what's the best football boot for wide-footed players? And it's so often the case that someone orders a new pair of boots online, they're not really sure about the fit, and they end up just being a little bit too narrow and uncomfortable towards the toe box. And one cool way that New Balance have addressed this that I don't see a lot of other companies doing is that they actually offer the 442s as well as all of their other models in both standard widths and wide variations. And since I had never bought a wide football boot before, I decided when I picked up the 442s to just spring for that wide version. And what New Balance does here is actually a little interesting because the sole plate itself isn't gonna be wider than the standard version. Instead, what they do is just add more material throughout the upper, so you're gonna get more volume inside of the boot and allow for a slightly more relaxed fit. And having tried on dozens and dozens of different boots this year as well as last year, I can still say that the 442s in this wide variation are by a large margin the widest boots that I've ever tried on. So if you do happen to be a player that often finds themselves getting squeezed into the front of really narrow boots, I would definitely recommend giving the 442s a try, especially if you happen to prefer leather boots. And then right after the fit, the second thing I like the most about the 442s is just going to be their overall weight. Because if you were to just look at the silhouette of this boot, having never picked it up before, you might actually think that it just follows the same traditional design of other more classic leather boots, and it might be a little bit bulky or heavy. But these boots in the size 10 and a half that I weigh here come in just over 200 grams, which is pretty insane considering they're almost the same weight as the Vapor 15s from Nike. And the reason you're going to be getting all of that weight savings is partially due to that thin upper that we talked about, but at the end of the day, it's mostly going to be due to this really thin sole plate that's also going to be extremely lightweight. It's going to have a little bit of snap towards the toe box here and then be pretty rigid throughout the midfoot, similar to more high-end sole plates. But despite the fact that the sole plate is going to be lightweight and pretty rigid, it doesn't go too over the top with the traction, so there aren't any bladed chevron studs here. It's actually just going to be a combination of all of these conical studs, which is great for me because I mostly play on artificial grass fields, and this boot in its traditional configuration here is going to be good for use on both FG and and AG surfaces. And that's one of the reasons I generally like boots that have conical studs, because I don't have to worry too much about the surface I'm going to be playing on. And then there's also some slightly smaller details I appreciated as well. This is one of my favorite implementations of a traditional lacing system that I've seen in a while. It's really modern, has a super thin and premium feeling tongue here. It's almost like a really thin piece of felt. And when you pull the laces tight here, it just wraps around your feet in such a snug way. And it also offers you a lot of adjustability. But I've never tried on a boot that's 100% perfect. So there are a couple areas where I think the 442 can improve. 
and the one that I noticed the most would probably be around the heel area. Because the heel padding that you get with the full 4-2s is actually going to be really, really thin, so it's not going to offer you much in the way of any padding, and in my experience, it did take at least three to four sessions for these to kind of break in. And by that, what I mean is that I had a little bit of irritation towards the heel when I first got the boots. But I can guarantee you, if you stick with these for just a few weeks, they're probably going to be one of the most comfortable pairs of boots you've ever owned. Now, in terms of competition with other big brands, I'd say that the main competitors to the 442 are probably going to be the Nike Premier 3, as well as the Copa Gloro from Adidas. Now, while I really do like those other two boots, they're going to come in at around $20 to $30 less, but they're also not going to quite have the level of build quality that you get from the 442 V2 Pro. And depending on what you're looking for from the comfort standpoint, the 442s are also just going to offer you a slightly wider fit, even in the standard variation. So if you are on the market for a more wide-fitting leather football boot, check out the 442s. Next up, we've got New Balance's flagship model, and that's the Furon V7 Plus. Now, technically, this is the Furon V7 Plus Pro, and I think one thing New Balance probably didn't think about enough when creating this version was the naming. Because having the Plus and the Pro right next to each other makes it a little bit awkward. But naming convention aside, these are actually extremely impressive boots. And since these are kind of the flagship speed boot offering from New Balance, you would expect them to be really thin and light, and they are. There's only one boot on the market that's lighter than the Furon V7, and that's going to be the Crazy Fast from Adidas. And then starting with the upper on the Furon V7 Plus here, you're going to have a beautiful implementation of this hypo knit material that's this really stretchy, elasticated knit towards the collar. And then you're also going to have a really soft, supple synthetic material throughout the rest of the boot. And you can see towards the top of the boot that these two materials actually layer over top of each other and the outer synthetic almost forms sort of a lace cover. And this is also going to result in the boots having this off-center lacing system and it's going to give you a really smooth striking surface throughout the entire boot. Now there's a lot of great synthetic uppers on the market, but there's also some that aren't as great as others. And sometimes when you have a full synthetic upper here, you can run into the boots starting to have a plasticky feel to them. And thankfully, that's something that New Balance avoids with the Furons. In fact, the upper here actually has a really slight texturing to it that I think makes it feel even more premium. And as I mentioned earlier, the upper is going to be very, very thin. That's part of what contributes to this being the lightest boot that New Balance makes. And it's also going to contribute to it having a really barefoot touch on the ball. So if you're looking for the most minimal football boot possible, this would definitely be a good option. Now compared to the other models from New Balance that tend to have a slightly more relaxed fit to them, the Furon is probably going to be the most snug fitting throughout the midfoot. Now that being said, while these boots are very snug towards the middle of the boot, they do open up a little bit towards the front of the toe box, and I do actually feel that the Furons have a slightly wider toe box compared to their competition in the Crazy Fast from Adidas and the Vapor 15 from Nike. And then another welcome addition to the Furons is that you're actually going to have a really padded heel area here with these nice pillow cushions and it's definitely going to contribute to them having less of a break in time compared to the 442s and they're just going to be a little bit more comfortable towards the back of the heel area. And similar to how I commented on the tongue feeling premium with the 442s, there's other little things that New Balance just gets right with the Furon here and the knit material towards the collar is one of them. It just feels so soft, stretchy, and premium and it's something that not all football boots are really able to nail, this kind of elasticated collar here, but this provides such a great balance of comfort, stretch, and lockdown. And while the lacing system is going to be off-centered, as I mentioned earlier, you're not going to have to worry about any uneven sensations of lockdown throughout the boot. They're still going to feel really even and secure throughout the top of the midfoot. Then turning over to the back of the boot, you're going to have the most aggressive sole plate on the Furons here that New Balance offers with this collection of really short sharp bladed chevrons. And if you do happen to play on firm ground natural grass, these chevron studs here are going to give you plenty of traction. Now that being said, if you're someone who plays on artificial grass most of the time, I personally did find this sole plate just to be a little bit too aggressive. Now I have searched and there is an AG variation for the Furon V7, but I have to admit it can be hard to find. And that AG variation is going to have pretty much an identical upper and the only difference is that instead of these bladed chevrons here, it's just going to be replaced with conical studs. So who would I recommend get the Furon V7? Well, if you're a big fan of speed boots, so models like the Mercurial or the X-Series from Adidas, boots that promise to give you a really close barefoot
foot touch on the ball, the Furon is definitely going to fit that mold. And if you currently find that some competitors are going to be a little bit too snug for you in the toe box, the Furons should be more accommodating. And finally, we've got the last New Balance boot on our list, and it also happens to be one of their strongest. It's the Tequila V4. Now, similar to the Furons, New Balance has just released a plus version of the Tequilas. But whether or not you get the V4 or the V4 Plus, they're going to be almost identical. And within the Tequila series, there's actually two different models you can choose between, being the laceless version as well as the low cut version. So let's start off by talking about the laceless version. So you all may know that Adidas has some decent laceless football boots. Puma's tried to make some laceless boots in recent years as well. But having tried out all those models, the Tequila is the best. It's going to have the same stretchy, elastic material that you get on the Furons, but it's going to extend all the way up through the ankle. And also similar to the other New Balance models that I mentioned, the most impressive thing about the Tequilas is going to be the fit. Because despite the fact that the Tequilas actually have a considerable amount of width in the toe box, even in the standard width version, they actually have amazing lockdown towards the heel and ankle as well. And that's kind of rare because usually in laces football boots, in order to give you enough lockdown, they kind of have to be really snug and occasionally pinch your feet in some awkward areas. So what's really impressive is that New Balance has been able to implement this fit that doesn't feel too loose and also doesn't feel overly tight. Now both the laceless and the low cut versions are going to have standard and wide variations, but as I mentioned, I think the standard width is going to be wide enough for the majority of people. For reference, I consider myself to have pretty wide feet and I thought that the width of the standard ones were perfect. Now compared to the Furons, the upper is going to be a little bit more substantial which contributes to the boots being just a little bit heavier. But personally, I slightly prefer the synthetic upper that you get with the Tequilas compared to the Furons. It feels just a little bit more solid to me which I appreciate and you also get these added elements throughout the upper to give you more grip on the ball. Now in terms of the low variation, these boots are going to have a slightly shorter knit collar and the addition of a lacing system. And you may remember when the Tequila was first released, they actually were only dropped in this laceless version and this low cut model with the lacing system didn't even exist. So the fact that New Balance did come out with this variation is a good indication that they're starting to listen to players. Because there's obviously still a lot of players, myself included, that do like having the addition of that lacing system. Just because it's going to give you a little bit more adjustability. Now, other than the collar and the lacing system, all the other features of the low edition are going to be the same. And that includes the sole plate, which is one of the most unique I've seen on any football boot. It's a really cool approach where the stud configuration is going to feature all conical studs throughout the center of the heel and the forefoot, but then on the perimeter of the boots, you're going to have these small bladed elements. Now these short bladed studs aren't going to be in contact for most of the time. It's usually going to be those conical studs, which are a little bit longer, but when your boot is at an angle, so when you're changing directions or you're getting ready to sprint, then those bladed studs will engage and they're going to give you a little bit more grip. But because those conical studs are engaged with the ground for most of the time, I felt comfortable wearing the Tequilas on artificial grass. Now, similar to the 442s, I did find that the Tequilas took a session or two to break in towards the heel area. But man, once you've worn them for a week or so, they are definitely one of the most comfortable pairs of synthetic boots you can get on the market. They're going to retail for about $220, which is the same price as the Furons, if I didn't mention earlier, and that's actually going to be a pretty decent deal compared to some of the top-end competitors. Because usually, if you're looking at the high-end models from Nike or Adidas, they're going to retail closer to $260 to $280. And as far as the main competitors for the Tequila V4 from New Balance, I'd probably say you'd be looking at the Phantom GX from Nike, as well as the Predator Elite from Adidas. Now, are the Tequilas going to offer you quite as much grip on on the ball compared to the Phantoms with that really sticky grip knit or even the Predators with that strike material? Probably not. And if having all of that grip is really important for you, I'd probably push you towards the direction of the Phantom GX2. But in my opinion, the Tequilas are just going to be more comfortable and more well-rounded boots overall. And that is going to do it for this video. So if you were on the fence about getting a pair of New Balance boots, or you didn't even know that New Balance sold football boots, hopefully this video gave you a good idea about what they offer. Also, let me know in the comments below if you've tried on any of the boots that we just talked about and what you think of them. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe for more football content, and I will see you in the next video.